So I'm looking here and there's a couple of them that are from uh, some people I've got. Uh, uh, um, ah, now the, the questions are coming in too fast. Uh, Harshil and uh, uh, I think just Harshil, he just chatted in multiple times, uh, saying, hey, can I get can I get a copy of uh, these slides and the, the recording of this? Actually, it's already done. Uh, CBT Nuggets, when this, this whole thing is said and done, will be making this available to anybody who wants it. So you'll be able to get the whole presentation, download the slides from there, screen cap them, whatever the case is. Um, Caesar is saying, do you think that wireless is part of the future so we should learn it? Yes, 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 I do. Um, the reason I, I emphasize that with three yeses is, is because uh, I would say four or five years ago, we saw a turning point where the number of devices released that used wired connections was actually less than the devices that use wireless connections. Furthermore, we're moving into a mobile world where everybody's living and breathing wireless. So that's why I put this together is wireless is the future. I mean, there will always be wired connections, always, 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 because the wireless access points have to connect to something. Your servers want to be a little more stable than wireless and printers and so on and so forth. Uh, but wireless is definitely the preferred uh, method nowadays for end users to connect. Uh, Serenith is saying, how do you convince a customer or end user that range the range game is not good and to move towards wi more wireless access points? So earlier I said, uh, the goal anymore is not range. We're not after cranking the power on these things. And the, the question is, how do you convince a customer of that and, and to buy more of them? Well, the proof is in the, put the pudding, meaning when you do that, when you try to play the range game, you're going to get inconsistent performance. You're going to get inconsistent um, uh, ability to connect at certain places of the building. So the, it, it will happen, meaning, you're going to have uh, you're going to have uh, poor per <laughs> my, my screen keeps flashing on sorry sorry it keeps distracting me um, you're going to have poor performance in the building and that alone will convince them and then you can start saying hey here's the right way to do this uh, and so on and so forth so uh, the other thing I'll tack right on there is uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz that is the death of wireless uh, people that use that or buy devices that are only 2.4 gigahertz will have performance issues so if it's not happening now. Uh, it'll be in the future unless you live at that cabin that I showed the picture of where there's nothing surrounding you that's that's running a competing signal. Um, so let's see, Arush is saying, uh, awesome, this is awesome. I passed all my writing and switching exams. I uh, appreciate Thank you, Arush. I appreciate that. Uh, love it. Um, Jose is saying, what certification do you recommend? Um, if you're going after certification, I will always steer people towards Cisco because they're kind of the de facto name in the game. So they will have the most thorough, the most proven certification. So you know that if you get this, uh, you'll you'll be there. The other one that I would suggest is actually one that I discovered um, when I was uh, when I was creating this uh, whole wireless series is it's uh, CWNA and CWNP. Uh, check it out. Just Google that CWNA and CWNP. It's an organization that's that's all they do is wireless certification um, and really educating the world on wireless technologies. Um, I grabbed a book uh, from them, the CWNA uh, Certified Wireless Network Administrator Quick Study Guide, and it is awesome. It, it It's not one that you'll read cover to cover, but it is an awesome reference anytime you're wanting to get into the nitty gritty of wireless. So check check that certification out. Um, what is your opinion? Oh, oh, I just scrolled off my screen. What is your opinion about aggregated wireless that Cisco offers in their C35, uh, 3650 and uh, 3850 switch product uh, product lines? Um, it's good. I mean, it, it's it's solid. It, it, it Cisco builds solid products, and even their aggregated wireless that's included inside of those. Um, it it works well. Um, for and let me let me emphasize this for organizations that have that all Cisco network that can fit into the box of what those switches provide, meaning they're going to be limited versus buying a, a completely uh, uh, standalone autonomous wireless platform. How much do you go into security in your wireless course, says Brad, and uh, what is your opinion of Internet of Things and wireless? Two great questions from Brad. Um, so on security, I, I don't. I mean, I, I go into it from a perspective that here are your options. Here are, uh, for instance, here's pre-shared key, here's radius, here's uh, 802.1x. I, I explain what they are, 
why you'd want to use them, but that's where I stop. Um, because the whole goal of that IT expertise wireless series is to give people enough, and again, I, I mentioned this uh, at the end of the presentation, to, to get past that barrier of, barrier of entry. Um, there's a quote, actually the owner of CBT Nuggets is who, the guy who stuck it in my head. He, he uh, put it on his whiteboard. He said, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Um, and I, and I, that keeps going through my head every time I create one of these series now is my goal is to eliminate the fear of diving into a new technology. Um, most people don't get into technology X because they're like, oh my gosh, it's so big. Or, or what if I click this, will I blow up the whole system? And that will actually stop a lot of progress. So my goal is to eliminate the fear of that. So I don't dive really deep into wireless security, but what is my opinion of internet of things and wireless is, is Brad's second question. Um, internet of things is the future. Just like somebody else who asked, uh, do I believe wireless will be the future? And I, I fully believe that it will be wireless and there will be a gob of devices. Um, now, I'm, I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but I've been saying that since probably 2003 when I was teaching Active Directory courses and talking about LDAP. And did you know that the whole design of, of uh, X500 and LDAP protocol in the directory is to have essentially a directory that contains objects of use to mankind? And I said, someday, this is back in 2003, um, you will see refrigerators that are online. You will see microwave ovens. Your car will be connected uh, to the internet. And back then, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, the dreamer. And now here, here we are. I mean, I drive a car <laughs> that's connected to the internet all the time. I have a refrigerator that has an IP address. It's, it's happening. So the internet things is, is upon us. Um, Harshil is saying, how is ruckus, uh, wireless access points? Good question. Um, I actually in the series, uh, the, the ICX, if you've got a CBT nugget subscription, please check it out. Um, there's actually one video I did in there that said, what wireless access point should you buy? And I go through Arrowhive, Aruba, Cisco, Ubiquity. I think I even put ruckus in there, but, um, the, the 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 thing that I I uh, would would say Ruckus is good, and I've played with plenty of Ruckus networks. Um, there's really two styles of wireless access points that you can um, have. You can have well, I, I guess three. You could have the autonomous, which is for the smallest of networks, where you control each WAP individually. But as you get into a larger organization those days are over because they, they move from one to five to 10 to 100 to 200 to 1,000 WAPs, and you just can't manage them anymore without a controller. So at that, that point, you have uh, a big decision. Do you maintain your own controller or do you pay somebody else to do it? Uh, for instance, Cisco Meraki, uh, Wireless, uh, Aruba, uh, all those vendors now offer their own cloud uh, based controllers where it's kind of like wireless as a service. You pay them, they just kind of run it for you, or do you want to run it yourself and save a whole boatload of money? Um, so long, long answer, short question. Ruckus is good, right? Same, same kind of thing. Uh, I started, okay, Brad is saying, I started my CCNP wireless certification a few years, but I haven't finished. How much has changed since then? Not much. Um, radio frequency is radio frequency. It's been the same for years and years and years, what you're going to see uh, that has evolved is the wireless standards. They're always twisting and turning wireless uh, frequencies to gain more bandwidth. Again, your whole goal is to send ones and zeros over the air. Uh, what you'll see now is gigabit wireless. There, there's a proposed standard that's actually coming out for 10 gigabit wireless. Come on, seriously. Um, so a so lot, of, lot of cool stuff, but really same technology, just increasing the speed. Uh, how right? Uh, what okay? Uh, what do you think of Aruba versus Cisco wireless access points? Honestly, um, same. <laughs> I know I know that sounds funny for me to say that, but I would say they are pretty much the same. Uh, I've I've deployed a lot of Aruba networks, and I've worked with a lot of Meraki uh, access points. The the beauty of both of them is their their cloud-based controllers well aruba you kind of have the option to go one way or the other um but meraki which is cisco's kind of uh, main main bread and butter now on a lot of their WAPs, um it, it's turnkey i mean you you plug in the wireless access points where they go and they are, have started really automating a lot of the functions to where it's you, you just kind of plug and play with wireless access points so 
Um, Aruba versus Cisco. I would, you know, if 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 I were at a, a green field and they say which one do, would you go with, I would say Cisco, and they would say why, and I'd say because I'm really comfortable with Cisco. Uh, HP bought Aruba. Um, I like HP. They make great pro curve switches and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just not as familiar with HP as I am with Cisco. So I'm going to go with that. So that, I mean, that would be that would be my decision point. Uh, it wouldn't be that I'm like, oh man, Aruba is oh, terrible or anything like that. So anyway, uh, last question. I just shut up. Oh, will will the webinar be available offline? Yes, Rich. Uh, yes, it will. Uh, it will be there. So, uh, with that being said, ah, 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 they keep going. Okay, okay. Last two questions. David just squeezed one in. What about extreme networking? Um, they so extreme networking. I've seen them. I, I wish I could give you a, a recommendation about them. I just haven't. I haven't implemented extreme networks. Um, I've walked into a business. I was like, oh, what's that? And I I saw it, and and that was that was about it. So. David, I can't really give you much of a recommendation on there. And last one, uh, Antonio is saying, uh, what do you think about cloud managed wireless that will make wireless control? Oh, ooh, ah, good question. Antonio is saying, do you think cloud managed wireless, uh, if I could say that again, um, will make uh, managed controllers obsolete? Um, no, I don't. I don't think that uh, cloud managed, like Meraki, Aruba, doing all of the cloud management of wireless access points will make them obsolete any more than I think Google Docs or Office 365 will make on-site infrastructure obsolete either. Now, we're, we're into a world of who knows the future, but at the same time, there's always going to be organizations that say, you know what, I love your cloud, that's good, but it's your cloud. Meaning, Meraki is run by Cisco, and we all love Cisco, we all trust, you know, Office 365, it's run by Microsoft, we all love Microsoft, we all, but it's their thing. There's security around that. There's availability. I mean, what if, what if, I mean, I, I use Office 365. Every now and then my email will stop working and I log in and they're like, oh, we're having some problems. We're, we're fixing the exchange server now. I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of lame. <laughs> you know, but I mean, would, would I have run into the same issue? I would say, well, no, I make sure my exchange servers stay online. But, but at the same time, so you see where I'm going with this. There will always be people that say, you know what, I I love Cisco's cloud, but I want to do it myself. And so I don't see cloud-based completely replacing on-site controllers. Good, 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 good. Great, great questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It has been uh, great being with you. Um, and I will wind this one down. Appreciate you coming. This will be available offline at cbtnuggets.com. Go to blog.cbtnuggets.com, and you'll be able to see it uh, posted there probably within a couple of days. You can download it, listen to it again, all that kind of stuff. But for now, I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing. See you later.